You know, after doing two videos in a row involving terrible things happening to corpses, I'm in the mood for a dose of stupid. Pask, you wanna get stupid? I wanna get stupid. Let's get stupid. So we've established a couple times on this channel that the Catholic Church's long history has been sprinkled with a few incidents that made us go, excuse me, he f***ing what? This story isn't all that different in that regard. But there is one thing I want you to keep in the back of your mind as we go through- Pask, what are you doing? Pask? Pask! Ugh, never mind. Where was I again? F*** it, I'll just start the episode. I'm Vibby. And on this episode of A Space Alien Explains, the Western Schism. Also known as the Great Occidental Schism, the Papal Schism, and the Schism of 1378. This event has spawned as many alternate names as it did simultaneous ruling popes. We just got popes falling out of the sky today, mixed in with some grade A petty bull****. After the death of Pope Gregory XI in 1378, it was time for someone else to take his place in the Iron Pope chair. The populace demanded a Roman Pope be elected, but when no qualified Roman candidate presented himself, the Cardinals ended up choosing a Neapolitan. And when I say Neapolitan, I mean he's from Naples. They did not put a Pope hat on a tub of ice cream. On April 8th of 1378, the Archbishop of Bari, Bartolomeo Prignano, was elected the Pope, and he decided to take the name Urban VI. Urban was actually pretty respected during his time as bishop, and as an administrator at the Papal Chancery. But as Pope, he suddenly became a massive d He was suspicious, reformist, and prone to violent temperamental outbursts. The Roman populace already didn't like him because he was Neapolitan, and now his chancellors were deciding they didn't like him too much either. Not because he was Neapolitan, but because he was being a d just to clarify. A majority of the chancellors decided they had enough working for this a so they packed up and left. On September 20th of the same year, they elected Robert of Geneva, also as Pope. Robert took the name Clement VII and set up a papal court in Avignon. So the second election ended up raising a lot of hell. There had actually been anti-popes like Clement VII before, but those previous anti-popes were created by rival factions who pretty much had no power. This was different. In this case, the same exact group of church leaders created the Pope and anti-pope, which is why it turned into such a show. Europe was split in half. Secular leaders had to choose which claimant they would recognize as the one true pope. The divisions were looking kinda like this. The kingdoms of Scotland, France, Naples, Cyprus, Castile, and Aragon threw their support behind the Pope of Avignon. England, Denmark, Sweden, Poland, and Hungary supported the Pope of Rome. Meanwhile, Portugal and the Holy Roman Empire were stuck in the revolving door and didn't know where to get out. Even after the deaths of the Pope and Anti-Pope, they still kept two separate papal courts. Boniface IX was elected in Rome in 1389, Benedict XIII was elected in Avignon in 1394. When Pope Boniface died, the cardinals in Rome offered to refrain from electing a new pope if Benedict agreed to step down. He responded with, Haha, no. And Rome elected Pope Innocent VII. There were many attempts made to reunite the two sides. And they all kind of sucked. So eventually, a church council was held in Pisa in 1409 in an attempt to remedy the issue. Wanna guess how that ended? Pope number three, come on down. You're our next contestant on this papal train wreck. Everyone on that council must have had a bit too much of that communion wine before walking into that meeting, because they thought there was no other option to solve the problem except to just toss in a third pope. And as we've seen so far, more popes, more problems. In 1414, another council was held at Constance. At this meeting, Alexander XXIII, who was the successor to that third pope, and Gregory XII, the Roman Pope, both agreed to step down from their positions. The Avignon Pope, Benedict XIII, 
refused to resign, and so they were forced to excommunicate his ass. The council elected Martin V, thereby ending the schism. Yeah, about that. The crown of Aragon refused to recognize Martin as the Pope and still continued to stand by Benedict XIII. They even kept on electing anti-popes, with Benedict XIV as the new successor and Clement VIII after him. But in an unexpected twist, Clement VIII resigned and recognized Martin's popeness as popier. So with three different lines of popes, one from Rome, one from Avignon, and one from Pisa, which of them was the official canon line of Pope? Rome is now recognized as the legitimate line, but confusion about who was considered Pope and anti-Pope continued well into the 19th century. Too many popes in the kitchen spoil the broth. So friends, keep in mind that- <coughs> Pask, what the hell is this? Pope counter. Pope counter? How many times you could say Pope in one episode? Pope. Get the shit out of my face, boy. Hi everyone! Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. This week's featured Vibisona is by Gabe96504399 on Twitter. Link to the artist's page is in the description. If you'd like to try your hand at creating your own Vibisona, use the hashtag on the screen and you could get featured. While we're here, here's some comments from the last video. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. If you're interested in supporting the channel, I have art commissions and a Ko-Fi page available. Buy me a coffee through there and I'll make you a little sketch as a way of saying thanks. Links to all that, as well as links to my social media, are in the description. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you real soon.